Hey everyone, happy Thursday and welcome to the Team Fit Revolution weekly call. My name is Lauren Kaliski and I am the host of this call. We hang out at the same time, same place, right here on Zoom once a week and bring you some new training from a coach either in the network or on our team. And so I'm super excited if you're here live or watching the recording and just wanna invite you to join us not only this week, but every other week as well. Um, tonight, we've got an awesome team call planned for you. It's a very um, requested topic. Everyone is trying to learn social media and really um, find your voice on social media so that you can, you know, attract your dream team, your dream clients, your dream coaches, et cetera. Um, and social media is a great way to do so. I know I can speak personally. I built 95% of my business online through social media, um, more like 99% online. And I'd say, you know, a really small percentage of those people I actually knew before Beachbody and but most of them I met online. And one of the main ways that I have built my business is through Instagram. And I know I'm not alone on this. Um, Instagram is huge on our team. Um, a lot of coaches have found success using that as one of their main platforms. And I think that's really the key is focusing on what platforms are you going to master. And that's why I wanted to have Nicole come on and guest speak because she has definitely mastered Instagram. And I've watched her um, stay true to her brand as her brand evolves. So she's gone through a lot of changes and I'll let her share more of her story. But like, I mean, she's not the same person that she was when she signed up to be a coach uh, three and a half years ago. I don't think any of us are the same person, right? Um, but her brand has always been her as her life continues to change or whatever chapter she's going through. And that's one thing that I really love about her. Um, I also feel like she's found her authentic voice. You know, um, I know everyone's just trying to figure out what to do, how to build their business and success leaves clues, obviously. But I feel like there's a lot of monkey see monkey do happening where you see someone else doing something and you're like, well, I should do that too. And yes, but no, you got to like do things, but make them your own. And, uh, that is something Nicole has mastered is just being her and no one could ever mimic or try to be her because it just wouldn't work. And if you don't follow her on social media, she is fit and fearless, right? Let me just, will you type your Instagram in the chat box for us, Nicole, so that they can all follow you? Um, but I absolutely love following her. I love how real she is. And yeah, I'm just going to stop talking about Nicole and let Nicole talk. So um, a little bit more about Nicole. She is a diamond coach on the team. She is a team leader on the leadership ladder. And she's been a coach for three and a half years now. And I love, she said, I've been a coach for three and a half years and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. I love that. Um, and, you know, one of the key things is I think a lot of times we feature people on team calls who, you know, have found success really quickly or have hit top 10 or are some super high accolades, which is really great. Those coaches are awesome and I'm not trying to take anything away from them, but I think it's really important for you guys to know that you can build a super strong, successful business that um, is fulfilling to you and also helps you and your family without ever being a top 10 coach. You don't have to be that person. So Nicole's got an awesome story. I'm gonna go ahead and toss it over to you, girlfriend, and you can take it away. Okay, um, how do I share my screen now? Is that a possibility? Do you have, do you see the bottom or the arrow at the bottom? Is it there or no? Okay, yeah. I, can, I can try it. It's there? Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, why don't you just start off by, I know you got a PowerPoint, but tell us a little bit about you, your story, how you found Beachbody, how you got started, and how you really came into your own on Instagram. Can you see my PowerPoint? Yep, we can see it. You're good. Okay. 
Um, so hi, my name is Nicole. Um, I like, if you haven't seen my Instagram is at fit and fearless. Um, if you want to check that out anytime, but, um, I just wanted to share a little bit about myself before I get started. Um, cause I know some of you on here, I definitely recognize some names and faces, but I don't know everybody. So, um, just to share a little bit about me. Um, I did, I started with Beachbody about three and a half years ago. Um, and I actually found my coach through Instagram. I, uh, had just moved up to Northern California. I'm pretty much a Southern California girl my entire life. Um, and we decided to totally just uproot and do something different because I couldn't pay my, my student loan bills. I mean, it's as simple as that. Um, we couldn't afford to live in San Diego anymore. So we moved up North and I had zero friends. Um, it was a totally just different area. I don't know if you're familiar with Southern to Northern California, but they're completely different vibes. I just felt so lost and confused. I didn't have any friends. And so I spent a lot of time on the gram and I, uh, my husband bought T25 for us. He thought, you know, well, maybe it'd be a good thing if you started to work out a little bit more, um, I know that's something that you like. Um, why don't you get involved in that? And so I was the coach that, you know, posted pictures of me um, with Shanti in the background, all sweaty and gross and disgusting looking, you know, hey, I did T25, holding up the T25, you know, disc. That was my Instagram. And tagging, ha hashtag Beachbody, hashtag Instagram, all those, or hashtag, you know, Shakeology, all of those things. And I found my coach, Stacey Palmer. She reached out to me and said, hey, girl, um, you basically look like somebody fun that I would want to be friends with. Do you want to be a part of our coaching community? Um, she didn't present it to me as a business. I didn't have to drink Shakeology. Basically, she invited me to be friends with her. And that meant the world to me because that's really all I was looking for at the time was a community of people that wanted to share um, their health and fitness journey, someone that understood what it was like to not have a support system, to be on this journey, but craving not just the health and nutrition and the, the workouts but craving just a friendship somebody that understood where you were coming from and i without a doubt you know i watched a video and i, I signed up that day because i was so excited to have this group of friends and I, I still to this day um the biggest thing i could take away from beach body if you know it, it all fell apart today I would still have those friendships and the people that I have, have met through this, this business or this opportunity are people that I'm going to carry with me. Um, you know, two of my best friends, um, I met through Beachbody. Stacy Palmer was actually a bridesmaid at my wedding. I mean, these are people that I'm going to to have with me forever. So to just to say that you know, oh, it's a business, or oh, it's it's you know something to help make a little money or a hobby. Um, it can definitely be that for you if that's what you want. But it can be something not just incredible and and, and have the power to financially change your life, but it truly can give you just amazing, beautiful people if you let that in. Um, so um, I've been a diamond coach for about uh, three years now. Um, so, and I, I've been that diamond coach and I've just come plugging along. My team is doing great. Um, but you know, um, I, I hit success club, but I don't have, what I don't have is a huge following. I have a pretty decent number of people that follow me, um, but I don't have huge numbers. I, I don't have, you know, um, Kylie Jenner, where, you know, I have 5 million people or even, you know, 10,000. I don't have that. But what I do have is an Instagram that I feel um, is very true to myself. Um, if someone saw my Instagram, they know exactly what I'm about. I mean, you can see from my PowerPoint, anybody that follows me on Instagram, that's like, oh, yep, that's her. Totally her. Um, and that connects to people because I'm very transparent. Um, I'm very open and honest. And I think people, um, they crave that. And that's what I was saying. I wanted was a friend. I wanted somebody that I could connect to and see. And when people see you, they see you being your true authentic self. They see you putting things out there that you like and just being real. And if it, some of it's weird, that's okay. That the people that you connect with are, are the people that are going to be your lifers, that are going to be your best friends and um, you know, your bridesmaids, if it gets to that, but those are going to be the people that are going to run with you in this business. Um, not the people that you have to drag along with you. Those are the people that are going to hold hands with you and just full on charge ahead with it. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Um, today I wanted to really share with you, um, my top eight 
tips on having a really pretty or a cohesive Instagram that makes sense, but it's also very true to you um, where you're not just um, posting pictures that you think look pretty, but it actually fits into your lifestyle and your vibe. Um, before I get into that, I guess I want to take a little step back to figure out what our, our vibe is, because if you're just posting a lot of photos and they don't fit anywhere, fit in anywhere, um, it's not going to make a lot of sense in, in the grand scheme of things. I can show you how to take a pretty picture, um, but if it doesn't make sense in your Instagram, your feed's just going to look like a mess. Um, so here I wanted to show you a couple pretty Instagrams that, that I'm sure a lot of us have seen. Um, if you see these kind of Instagrams, I kind of think of them as like feature Instagrams. They're very specific. Um, you'll notice that they're, they're very clean looking. They all kind of feature the same kind of content. Um, they're pretty. Um, but for most of us, that's not going to work because we have what I would call more of a lifestyle um, Instagram where we're not sharing the same content over and over and over again. It's not the same smoothie bowl or it's not the same, you know, different kinds of avocado toast every day. Um, we are sharing who we are. We're sharing pictures of our family. We're sharing pictures of our workouts. We're sharing pictures of our food. And so it tends to be a little bit more mix matchy because we have a bunch of different kinds of content that we want to share on it. And if we don't have anything that ties it all together, it's really easy for that to kind of just turn into a mess. That's why I think that before I show you some ways that you could, some super simple ways that you can have pretty photos, um, I want you to step back and think about what your vibe is that you really want to convey with your lifestyle. And that's not really, you know, I'm not asking you to make something up. I want you to really step back and think what what do you want to convey who you are at your core and how you can represent that um, graphically or in pictures so that people can can get a better sense of that so um, first step is I want you to define your vibe and re or redefine your vibe and um, refine or define your whatever you can read that um, you know what I meant to say um, so figuring out your vibe, when people see your Instagram, and I would think about it as just even the landing page of your Instagram where they're seeing the profile and the top, you know, six or nine pictures or whatever comes up, people should be able to pick up what your vibe is from there. And that's, I mean, if, if it's almost like your, your cover page of your resume or your profile picture. That is what people see when they see you know, they don't look at all the photos, they don't look at all the captions and the content there. What's on that landing page is what they pick up from you. What is your vibe? So by seeing that, you want them to feel, to understand what you're all about, um, why someone should follow you, what value you would be adding to them if they were to follow your account, um, what, what do you want them to feel when you see their account, um, whether it's, you know, bright and fun and vibrant colors, or you kind of have more of a moody feel. Um, and not to say that either one of those is better or worse, but that's your vibe. Um, and what is my message? And I think that in those top profile and your top, you know, six to nine pictures and a quick scroll, people should be able to figure that out. Um, if you look through your Instagram right now, and I definitely invite you as we go through this um, to look at your Instagram while we're doing this, if someone couldn't do that, um, then there's something that's, that's wrong with your, with your gram because um, people aren't going to spend time um, looking through all the pictures and reading your quotes. If initially they don't you know want to invest in what you have to offer so really step back and figure out what your vibe is and I would encourage you to, to do that before you get um, started because if you lose sight of your purpose your intent your vibe your message whatever you're trying to convey if you're body positive or you're talking about losing weight um, if your message isn't bold if you're content isn't bold and beautiful and nice looking, your message will just become a mess. If your page looks like shit, no one's going to care about your message because it's not going to get across to them. They're not going to spend the time reading your quotes and reading your story. And, and it could be the most amazing, powerful transformation that you want to share with people. But if your pictures suck, people aren't going to see that. So um, figure out your vibe. What I would suggest doing is creating like a mood board. So this is my social media, social media mood board. And again, I think if you're following my social media, if you see my Instagram, um, this is exactly how I 
plan my Instagram to look. This is what my Instagram looks like. This is my inspiration. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to kind of sit down and do that. It doesn't have to be anything super crazy detailed, um, but get what you want your vibe to be on paper, write it all down, um, you know, what those things are, and then think of graphical or pictures. I don't know what that word is, um, but representations that represent that in pictures. So I, you know, like pineapples or I'm about female empowerment or I like bright colors. What is going to convey those sort of messages and themes on my social media in pictures? And so that's why I would suggest doing a mood board because anytime I, um, think about, um, something that I may be going to post. If I don't see it fitting into my vibe, I don't post it. If I don't see it, it fitting in with everything else I have, um, then it's just distract, distracting and it's detracting from my message. One bad picture can take away from the content that you have because it's, if it throws a wrench in that, that thing that you've created, then, it, then people get distracted and they don't want to be on your page anymore. Um, if I see one photo that, that just doesn't make sense and it's ugly and it's weird, people unfollow. And it's not, if it's long, and I'm not saying you can't do things that are, different or pushing the boundaries or a little uncomfortable for you, as long as they're staying true to you and your social media, um, it's not all for likes, but if it doesn't fit with your vibe, then that's what people see. That's what throws them off. So do a social media mood board. I would include colors, pictures, um, maybe fonts you like. Um, that's a first step. Okay. okay. So what I wanted to share, this is kind of the big things that I wanted to focus on for our team call. I know I've talked a lot already, but um, I wanted to focus on eight tips that I think are going to give you really pretty pictures. Um, because like I said, if, you're, if your pictures are ugly, people aren't really going to care about your content or your message. Um, and I do not have any sort of graphic design background. I don't own a fancy camera. Um, I have an iPhone 6 um, that, that doesn't have, you know, the fancy portrait mode, all that stuff. I want one, but I don't have it. Um, I don't have professional editing tools. I don't use Adobe, none of that. Um, I use like two apps over and over again. Um, and I don't look like Beyonce. Um, so that's okay. You don't have to be a model. You don't have to be gorgeous, but I can show you some tips to have pretty, um, Instagram photos. So Tip number one is I want you to have some sense of self editing. And that really goes back to why I think it's important to have that mood board. Um, because if it's, if it doesn't fit into your concept of what you're trying to do, don't post it. If it's blurry, if it's poorly lit, if it's out of focus, if it's out of place, don't post it. I think that we've gotten into this concept of if I don't post my workout, if I don't post my Shakeology, if I don't post, you know, what I was doing, if I don't, or my personal development, people are going to assume I don't do it. And maybe that used to be true, but the fact that Instagram's kind of evolved where now there's stories, I think that that's a better place for a lot of the content. Um, I post on stories all the time. If you're not doing it, um, I would strongly encourage you to, because that's where um, you can put stuff all the time. I mean, and, and it's that stuff that doesn't necessarily fit in. If you want to share what you had for breakfast and it's two scrambled eggs and it looks like dog barf, um, post it on your story. Don't post it on your feed where it's a permanent thing that people are looking at all the time. Um, number one tip I can ever share with you is don't post bad photos. The end. Um, if it doesn't fit, delete it. Um, your feed or, you know, those, what stays on your Instagram is permanent. Um, it's a, I mean, you can delete it, but it's your permanent reflection of you and your message. And it needs to fit in with that theme that you have going. Um, I will post photos a lot. And if, if I'll, if I'll post a couple more and it just doesn't feel like that one makes any sense, um, I'll delete it. I'll save the caption and then I'll throw in another photo and, and add the content back. Um, and you can totally do that if you feel like something doesn't make sense. Um, but we get so caught up in the fact that we have to share that sometimes we're sharing really bad photos. So stop doing it. Um, for example, I see a lot of these. Um, one, I think that there are just some things that you can't make look pretty. Um, your Tupperware full of oatmeal is never going to look cute. So don't put it on your Instagram feed. 
put it on your story if you have to. Um, your egg salad sandwich or your tuna fish sandwich, they're never going to look pretty. I mean, unless you're maybe a food stylist, these, these aren't photos I ever recommend that you put on your feed. Um, take some time and think about it. Does, I mean, these are simple questions that you should ask yourself. Does this photo look good? And if you can honestly say that you think either one of those makes somebody want to follow you or do what you're doing or think, yeah, that girl eats really interesting and delicious food. I want to be a part of whatever meal plan she's following then post it. But I don't think most of us could honestly say that about photos like this. Um, and then and going back, does it make sense on my feed or does it serve a purpose? Um, if I'm putting something on my permanent, you know, feed on my, on my Instagram, these photos don't offer anything to people. If it was a recipe, maybe, but they're not. They're just content to post content. And I don't think that Instagram is a place to have filler like this anymore. Um, the same goes for selfies. If you don't look good, why would you post it? And I'm not saying that, you know, you have to take 500 selfies and find the one that looks perfect. But if it doesn't look good, don't share it. Um, be genuine. I'm not saying you have to, you know, do a full face of makeup every time and do the perfect angle. Um, show, show your roles, show, you know, your hair crazy and messy and no makeup. Be you, be authentic, but still put yourself in good lighting. And sometimes that's as easy as just turning this way from this way when you take a selfie. Be cognizant, be aware of these little changes that you can do um, that are really going to make a big impact on your photos. Um, so one, don't post bad photos. Okay. The second thing I think that is really great. Can I, can I pause you for just one second? Yeah. Of um, I love, I love the tip of like turning to the light, but honestly, like your selfies are so good. Is that all you do is turn to the light? Do you have any other tips? I, so one of my tips is selfies, but, um, it's, I can, I can go up there right now, I guess. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. If you're going to get to it, girlfriend, don't let me distract you. Get, you can come back to it. You'll come back to it. No, no, no. Huh. Your, your selfies are good. Awesome. I'm glad you're, I'm glad you put that in there. I'll shut up now. <laughs> I don't look like Beyonce. No, um, but no, it really, a lot of the times it really is, you know, if I stand this way and the lights in my face or I turn this way, it's going to look better. Um, I, I mean, I don't take selfies of myself when the sun goes out. If the sun goes down, then I don't take selfies. I mean, there's just common sense things where fluorescent overhead lighting of your kitchen is never going to make you look good. Um, and I don't think we think about these things sometimes. Okay, so backgrounds. This is the simplest thing you can do to make um, a consistent look on your Instagram that doesn't cost a lot of money, um, that isn't... Um, super complicated to do. Um, for instance, this feed that you, that I showed you that everybody's like, Oh, ah, that's so pretty. All it is, is that marble background. She could put, you know, a turd on a, on a marble background and we would be like, Oh my gosh, that's, <laughs> that's so pretty because it had, it's consistent with her feed. Um, it looks good. So think about that. Backgrounds are one of the easiest ways to build consistency. Um, with, with selfies, that's a really cool, good thing that you could do, whether you're standing against, you know, maybe a brick wall. Um, a lot of bloggers do it against like their garage door. I mean, that's such a simple thing. We all have garages. Um, but it, it makes the feed look consistent. Um, um, the marble, um, I use, a, I like a lot of white, um, on my Instagram feed. And I, the, like the biggest thing that I've ever invested in my Instagram to make it look pretty is a piece of poster board. Like, I'm not even kidding. Um, it costs a dollar and that's what I use for all of my white backgrounds. I don't have a white table or fancy, um, countertops, a piece of foam board will make your pictures look pretty. And then you can elevate it from there and add a font or a filter or whatever. Um, contact paper, scrapbook paper, if you are into maybe more colors, I think those are really great options. Um, blankets or fabric, um, you could use maybe a napkin or a plate. Um, any kind of thing that you have that feels like um, it's going to add personality to your Instagram, but also that consistency to your Instagram. Um, if you have a really pretty, you know, cup that you always drink your coffee out of, if I see that cup in your feed, maybe every 10 or 15 photos or whatever, I know that that's your cup. 
Um, I know Alexa, she does her like pre-workout and it's always in, not always, but it's in that mug. And it's like that half teal mug. That's like, I know that's her mug. And I, so it's like things that you associate with people. Um, if you're constantly using those elements, um, people recognize that in you. And then when they see them again, they'll think of you. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money on these things. Um, but I think it really elevates what your, your feed looks like. Um, three is lettering and fonts. Um, I know that there are lots of cool apps and tons of fonts for you to choose from, but that doesn't mean you should be using every single one on all your posts. This, I think, um, has the ability to make your feed look absolutely hideous if you were using tons of different fonts that don't make any sense together um, in tons of different colors. Um, it, it, it doesn't do anything for your Instagram. It makes it look like you are indecisive, that you change your mind all the time, that you don't have any sort of branding, um, and it just it distracts from what's really going on. Um, I don't use a lot of words anymore. Um, not to say that I think it's a bad thing. I just kind of got um, annoyed in having to open another app to add them. But if you're going to add them, I would be consistent in what you're doing. And I'm not saying you have to choose a single font, but maybe two or three or um, you know four, even that you like, and use those over and over again. Um, particular, particularly if you're sharing a lot of um, like quotes. Um, Keep them consistent in the same color even. I think it's gonna make it really look pretty on your Instagram. Um, the more variety you have with fonts, it, it's going to confuse people because it doesn't seem like you have any particular font that's you know branded toward you. This is all about building your brand and building that consistency. And if I see something and I know that this is the font you use, I recognize automatically that that's a photo of yours. So that's, I think, is something that we want to build in is having people recognize that from us. So pick one or two or three and stick with them. Um, four, this is a super easy one too. I think that you could, all of us can do. Um, I think it's going to help with making a really consistent Instagram, but I think because there are so many options, sometimes we get carried away. If you are using 25 different filters on your photos, um, it makes your photos look kind of scattered and, and there's just no consistency, nothing going on. Um, and and it, it's confusing to people um, because I don't know, it can't, when I see your photos, I don't automatically know, oh, that's you. Um, for instance, one of my, one of my friends, um, Anna Vargas, her photos always kind of have a pink hue to them. Or if you follow um, like Coach Crystal, she always has that, that, rainbowy kind of filter to them. Those are simple things that you can do. I mean, it takes two seconds to add a filter onto a photo. If you're adding the same two or three filters to all your photos, um, it's going to build that consistency across your brand. And it doesn't take anything fancy. You don't have to have, you know, any fancy design studio, Adobe, whatever. You can do it even in the Instagram app itself. Um, something that I don't think a lot of people know either in the Instagram app, when you select um, a filter that you want to do, you can adjust, if you do it back and forth, you can adjust how much of that filter you want to do. Um, so that's something really easy that you can have that is going to adjust or that's going to make your feed look clean and consistent. Um, number five, um, I think this is the biggest thing for mostly, I would, I would say that new coaches struggle with this a lot is we become beach body coaches. And we think that as soon as we become a coach, that means that we have to be beach body. Um, and that's really what confuses your feed. It kind of turns people off um, because people don't come to your, your social media, your Instagram to buy things. Um, if I want to buy something, I'll go to Amazon or I'll go to Target. Um, or I'll go to Target. But I'm not gonna come to your Instagram and be like, well, I wonder what Lauren's doing today so I can buy this. Um, people come for you for suggestions. They wanna see what you're doing, why you're doing this. Um, they wanna see you doing it, but they're not coming there to buy it. So if your whole Instagram is photos of Shaleen and Shanti and $10 off, um, people aren't gonna wanna follow you and it turns people off. You're not, an advertising board. You're not a billboard for Beachbody. You are you. And the best way that you can do 
to, to get people and to draw people in and have them be a part of this is they, them seeing you use it, seeing you drink Shakeology, seeing you do the workouts, seeing you pose those um, post-workout selfies. They don't want to see your DVD of T25. That's not why they're there. Um, if you want to do those things, again, I think that Instagram stories is a great place to do it where you're like doing my workout, um, you know, showing you, picking your workout and doing your workout and Shanti giving you a quote, whatever. All those things are great on your story. Um, but on your permanent Instagram feed, I don't think they belong there. It's really distracting. Um, do not post pictures of you kissing your Shakeology bag. I mean, people get it. I know you like Shakeology, but this is not something that's going to make me want to buy it. Um, I don't see, I've never seen a photo of someone, um, you know, holding their, their bag and, and mm, I love Shakeology so much. And I've seen that and go, oh my God, I want to buy that. I've seen photos like that. And I'm like, oh my God, where that girl get her lipstick. I love it. Um, but I've never seen it and wanted to buy Shakeology because of it. You need to, if you're going to share Shakeology or share beach body products, share them in a way that is authentic to you. Same goes for your Shakeology bottle. Some of you, I would think that the only cup that you own is a Shaco bottle because that's the only thing I ever, ever see on your feed. Um, if I were to scroll through your feed, the only item that I've ever seen you drink anything out of is your Shaco bottle. Um, and I know that that's not true for any of us, or I hope that it's not. Um, also, some of you that are sharing your Shakeology bottle all the time, um, it's like, it says like, hey, go we bot. Like you've washed it so many times that I can't even read what it said. It's like, don't, don't post that. Don't share that. Um, put it on your story if you have to, but it doesn't belong on your feed. These are opportunities, I think, for you to share something that's really true to you and create that branding. Um, like I said, I, I see people that I see all the time and I watch their stories and see their feeds. I know what cups they use. I know what water bottles they have. I know what, you know, because they share those things all the time. Um, so that's a branding opportunity. Like my husband just bought me this water bottle. This is very on brand for me. So I will share me drinking Shakeology or water out of this instead of my Shaco cup, because that's going to be sharing something that's authentic to me. Um, when people see people that aren't necessarily followers of yours now, when they see these beach body product placement kind of things, they get turned off because they don't come to your feed. Like I said, they don't come there to buy things. They come there to be your friend, um, to be engaged with you in your journey, not beach body. Um, my next piece of advice, um, these are really simple to integrate into your feed. I'm gonna call them staging pieces. Um, these are on-brand objects or items that you can insert into your photos that are going to add texture, color, contrast, depth, um, and more importantly, I, I think is consistency. Um, and I want you to think of little items that you might have, they're totally on-brand to you, that you can just throw in a picture. Um, I, if you're sharing, you know, I share photos of my my meals, my, my breakfast or my dinner. Um, it doesn't necessarily make sense, I guess, with a lot of my feed sometimes. So what I'll do is just, I have like vinyl little banana leaves. I'll throw one of those in there or I'll put it on my pink plate because this to me stays on brand. Um, so these are little things that you can do that are gonna create that consistency, but it also adds that depth, that personality to your photos. Um, think of these things like cups, plates, plants, cutting boards, um, napkins, dish towels, notebooks, hats, straws, um, nail color, I think is a big one. Um, when you're like, you post like you're holding things, photos and your nails look funky. Um, people notice that. And I'm not saying like, I don't judge you for it, but when people are looking at their feed, they see that and it doesn't make me want to buy or use whatever you're doing. Um, I always have my thumbnail painted. This is my thumb. Um, and it's always the color that is on brand to me. Um, when I, when I get my shit together, I do paint all my nails, but I always have at least one done because if I'm using anything in my feed, you can see at least one of my thumbs, um, that is painted an on brand color. Um, and I say on brand color because I use a lot of the same colors. And if you kind of go back to your vision board of what you want your social media to look like, you'll have those colors in mind. Um, 
And that keeps my look consistent no matter what I'm touching or holding. Um, pens, placemats, um, your pet, your child, a letter board, a yoga, yoga mat, anything that you can constantly bring back into your feed is going to create that consistency. And I think um, people just really love consistency and they crave that consistency from you. Um, the same way you crave your Shakeology every day, people want to crave that consistency, that expectation from you. I want to know what you did today. Um, I don't need to know every single meal you had, every single thing you did throughout the day, but if I see you using those branding items, then I recognize it's you and um, what uh, you're all about. Kind of going with that, um, is some theme and recognition or branding objects. Um, these are mine. I think if you're following me on social media, you will totally know what I'm talking about when I say that. Um, if you scroll through my feed, I would say that you can't get through more than two or three photos without seeing pizza, pineapples, flamingos, or some sort of like palm trees or leaves. Um, this is what I wanted to create my mood board around. I live in Southern California. This made sense for me. If I lived in, you know, Chicago or Nebraska, these probably wouldn't make sense for me. But for me, these were super simple things that I could do. Um, and you, you won't see my feed not have these things. Um, and I, Lauren kind of talked about how I progressed through my journey and, and I did. I started Beachbody three years ago and I, I wasn't married then. I was my boyfriend at the time and then we got married and now we have kids and blah, 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 blah. But these are kind of recognition and branding items that I've taken with me through all of those seasons. Um, and it can change. I definitely think that you can change these things to your preferences. I, I don't know if I'll always like flamingos. I do know I'll always like pizza, but um, you know, you don't you don't have to stick with these, you know, one, two, three things for the rest of your life, but keep them consistent with you for at least, you know, a season or a while, or know that these are simple things um, that people can associate with you. Why I think it's so so important is one. Again, it creates that consistency across your brand um, and your Instagram feed, but also um, I call them recognition items because people will see these things and they'll think of me and I get it all the time with pizza. I mean, look at my, my Facebook. If you're friends with me on Facebook, you'll see people post all the time. Hey, I saw this flamingo towel. thought of you. Hey, I saw these pineapple cupcakes and thought of you. This pizza, like this pizza shirt here, someone found it and said, hey, I thought of you when, when I do this. People are thinking of me when they're not working out, when they're not eating. They're thinking of me when they're doing normal shit, when they're shopping, when they're hanging out, when they're watching TV. I come to people's minds. And like I said, I don't have a huge, huge following. I have, you know, like 5,000 people. But of those 5,000 people, I'm on people's minds, not when they're scrolling Instagram. I'm on their those people's minds and I'm when, and when they think of me as a friend because they think of me as somebody like, oh my gosh, like she would love this pineapple t-shirt. Um, so the fact that people would recognize that in you, I think creates that really strong relationship because they do want to be your friends. Those are your lifers. Whether they've bought something from you yet or you're still developing that relationship, they want to be one of your lifers. They want to be a part of this because they already feel that they are. They already think of themselves as your friend because they think that if they can recommend, if you can recommend something to them, they can recommend something to you. And it's going to get to that point of reciprocity where thank you for sharing this t-shirt with me. Let me share Shakeology with you. It will get there if you keep pushing those, those same things for them. So definitely um, in your mind, think of a couple things that, um, are going to have these theme recognition branding kind of objects for yourself um, and repeat them in your in your Instagram feed. You don't have to do it as persistently as I do, I guess, um, but just have them so that people recognize them um, in you and your feed and make sure that they're true to you. Um, if I don't like pizza, it'd be super weird if I was always posting about it. Okay, um, and then selfies is the last thing I wanna talk about. Um, I want to share with you um, a few tips to taking really cute selfies. Uh, okay, make sure that your pretty little face is visible. If I were to go on your Instagram and the first five photos I see, if I don't see you, I'm out. Like if I can't see your face, if I don't know who I'm following, I don't, I'm not interested. 
when I am on, when people are on Instagram, they want to connect to you and a person and a face, put your face out there, make yourself visible. Um, I mean, I share this photo without a head, but that's, so it's not a great example, but people want to see you. The other thing you could do or that you should be doing is smiling in, in your photos. Um, you know, obviously like we're not always in a happy mood um, and I'm not saying you need to fake it all the time, but if you're going to share on social media, um, I would think that most of our photos should be positive um, and that they should be coming from a smile because when people see a smile, it translates so much of, hey, I'm fun, I'm welcoming, I want to be your friend, I'm approachable, you can talk to me. It's the same as if you would see someone in real life. If all of their photos are like super emo, like my face photos, like not looking and little you know, bangs in the face, I don't, I, I, I don't want to connect to that. But if I am looking at you, I'm smiling, I'm doing whatever I'm doing in a, in a fun way um, where you could see yourself, you know, in the photo with me, we're hanging out. Um, I think that's, that's really going to translate to people where they want to be a part of it. Um, three, clean your mirrors. I think that we've all seen, you know, the mirror selfies where people are like, don't mind the mirror. It's so ugly. There's toothpaste on it clean it. Like if you've noticed that before you took the picture, why'd you take the picture or why did you post it? If you have the attention to detail to notice it in yourself and say, Oh, you know, don't mind the mirror. Don't mind the mess. Take two seconds clean the mirror or take two seconds and hold it, hold it out this way and do a selfie and don't do the mirror shot. Um, just be a little bit more cognizant of what's going on in your surroundings. Um, check your space. Um, this kind of goes back to what I was saying with lighting. Um, standing right under the kitchen light doesn't always look good. Um, if you can stand by a mirror, or I'm sorry, the window um, is going to give you the best type of lighting. That natural um, sunlight is always going to look best on anybody. Um, so what else? Um, check your space. Um, if there's um, somewhere in your house that's well lit or it maybe has kind of a branding element if you can you know stand in front of a fence or in your kitchen or somewhere that has a little bit of consistency where you can keep taking photos there and it looks nice um keep keep going there um along with that um if you're going to do bathroom selfies don't put your toilet in it um i i, I mean the, there's little simple things but honestly like people notice them um, and it really has the power to detract from your pictures. And if it's detracting from your pictures, it's distracting for your message. Um, have a look or a pose. Um, this is kind of just like on brand or, you know, what is something that people notice about you, whether you kind of take pictures all the same way. Um, we kind of joke that, well, we kind of joke. I kind of joke that I have like a pose. Um, it's mostly because and it's like that bent over kind of like slouch. Um, it's because I like where I position my camera when I take a lot of like self time pictures is I have to bend down a little bit to get all the way in it. So that's like my pose is like bending down a little bit, but you can do something like that, you know, yourself, whether it's, you know, this is always your pose or, you know, um, you're always standing with one leg forward and hand on your hip, whatever you want. It's just, it, it, it's one of those things where again, you can create some kind of consistency in your feed. Um, blah, 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 blah. consistency elements, um, think about things that you can do with your person, your body, what you're wearing that create that consistency. Um, for me, a lot of my photos, I'm wearing a hat or I'm wearing a headband or I'm wearing pink. Um, I don't always wear hat or headband or pink. I have other things. I don't like well, actually do always wear a hat, but, um, but you don't have to have all those things, but that's gonna create a consistency in your photos. And again, those are all sort of branding, branding items, I guess, about yourself. Um, uh, if you are um, someone that has you know, a lot of black or a lot of pink or bright colors, take selfies in those. That's what people recognize about you. Um, I would say that when you're doing before and afters, um, make sure that your outfits are kind of the same. Um, your poses are kind of the same because I think people are going to see that um, at, as being more true to life. And then um, I guess lastly, my biggest thing that um, for me, selfies, um, I have, a, I don't know where it is right now, 
but I have one of these just little self timer selfie remotes. You can buy them on Amazon for like five bucks and it will totally change yourself the game because I guess, I mean, I guess they're still selfies if you're self timing them, but you can stick your phone, your camera, prop it up anywhere. And again, I don't have a fancy prop. I usually stick my phone in a coffee cup or I lean it against, you know, my daughter's crib. Um, that's like, this is my, my selfie zone right here. Um, and I prop it up. I don't have, you know, you don't have to have a prop or not a prop, a tripod or anything fancy. Um, but work the angles, the lighting that works for you, and then use that little selfie remote. Um, it's also great for Instagram story, stories or Snapchat. If you just hold it down, um, you're now in like the hands-free mode um, and you can continue to record that way if you want trying to record your workouts or anything like that. Um, like I said, that has been a huge thing on helping my pictures look good is being able to use that selfie remote. Um, selfie remote and a white piece of poster board have really been game changers in my Instagram business. And that's it. <laughs> so, so good. Like, I mean, you guys, these are pretty much rules to live by. I'd say like a lot of things in this business are opinion. Um, and like everyone does things differently, but I feel like everything that Nicole shared tonight is pretty black and white. <laughs> like, like there's no really debate about any of these things. They're all rules we should be living by and myself included. I, there's so many things that I wrote down, um, that I'm excited to do here. I'm going to share what a few things that I'm going to work on. If there's any questions for Nicole, will you type in the chat box and let us know? And Nicole, you can end the screen share. Seriously, girlfriend, you just killed it. I don't know if you were looking at the chat box, but, um, I, I was, but then I forgot to like scroll to see it. So I'm like, nope, go ahead. <laughs> You're all good. You're all good. Um, what do you do with the white poster board or with the poster board? Um, uh, okay. Hold on a minute. So I like a lot of white in my feed. So I use the poster board one just to use it as like the white background. If I'm taking like, you know, I'll put my food on it and just leave it there. Um, it creates that white background. The other thing that's really great is if you prop the other poster board kind of up, it's going to almost like, you know, when you go to a photo, no, I don't know if you've ever been to a photo shoot because I haven't, but what I see on TV of people going to photo shoots is they'll have, you know, lighting to diffuse it. You can also use the second poster board to do the same thing and diffuse your lighting where you're, you're adding, you know, taking away the shadows from the rest of your picture. So I think that's a really cool thing that you can do. Like I said, it costs two bucks. Yeah. I just went to the store and actually got poster boards. I don't know if they're in here. I haven't used them yet, but like, I've just been trying to figure out how everyone gets that cohesion. Someone asked, do you think that zebra would be overkill as a background? Um, if she loves it. I mean, I don't think so. No, I mean, I, I wouldn't do it like in every single photo. But I think it's, that would be one of those really cute branding elements that you can add into it. And that's why I would know, like, I don't, I don't know you like Zebra. I followed your Instagram forever now and I never don't know that about you. Yeah. So, I feel like if you, oh, sorry, go ahead. No. Yeah. So, I mean, just, I mean, you can even sneak it in anywhere where if it's just a Zebra shirt or, um, you know, every once in a while, add, add it as a pattern on your backgrounds. I think that would look really cool. And, it, and that, and that shows who you are. Yeah. Yeah, I think intermixing it in a background, like, I mean, I think some of these things you just have to do a little trial and error, like visually, you know, start, start finding your theme, start finding your look per se, and test it out. Like if you look at your Instagram feed and you're not drawn to it and you wouldn't message you, chances are your life or wouldn't either, right? Um, and I kind of look at it as like, like Nicole is saying, like, it's like your resume, it's your storefront. It's like what introduces people to me without me having to say anything. So it should speak for me, so to speak. <laughs> that was redundant, but, um, so I'm curious, like, I think, um, a good rule of thumb, you, when we hear team calls like this, and I know I see in the chat box, like a lot of you are like, oh my gosh, like I haven't been doing any of this. My Instagram feed is horrible. Like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't be so hard on yourself. Um, I, I obviously think all of these things are rules to live by, but my recommendation to you for everyone that's on the 
call live tonight would be to pick two of these things that you're going to start implementing tomorrow and, and, and pick two of them and start doing them. And then, you know, over time you can go back and, um, you know, pick two more things, but don't overwhelm yourself by being like, Oh my gosh, now I have to overhaul everything. Um, yeah, maybe you do, but you can do it kind of piece by piece. So that would just be my recommendation. So two things that I'm going to add or start doing, and I'd love to know what your two things are, um, is using branded items regularly. I loved that brand recognition and like tying it through. And I don't know why I haven't been doing that, um, at all. And, um, oh my gosh, my selfie game, watch out. It's about to get so much better. <laughs> I had no idea. Well, I mean, I kind of, I knew about the remotes, but I didn't know that's how everyone's like getting their real good selfies or like starting their Instagram videos without their arm being like still in it. <laughs> my arm. <laughs> um, yeah, real good stuff. Any other questions, anything you guys want to ask Nicole about Instagram, about business, about social media, anything? No? Okay, don't hop off yet if you're on live because we're gonna do a post-call giveaway. Um, I think the selfie remote, you just type it in on Amazon and it'll come up. Make sure you get one that's like compatible with your type of phone. How did the followers find you? How have you been growing your following? What, what tips do you have for growing your following? Um, so I, I don't use a lot of hashtags anymore personally on my photos because Instagram, whatever, they're doing their thing and changing algorithms, whatever. I'm not saying don't use them anymore, but I'm not getting a lot of people coming from those tags. Um, I'm actually going and actively following people and getting them to follow me back. And how I do that is I am basically just looking for shit I like stuff I like. Um, like I'll look for my little girl, Evelyn. Um, she, I like buying clothes for her. So I'll like go to Carter's and I'll look at like whatever they have on their feed. I'm like, Oh, there's a cute dinosaur shirt. And then I'll look and see what other moms have commented on it because those are the moms that like the same stuff I do. Um, that we obviously are going to connect on some level because we have a kid the same age. Um, we both like weird dinosaur shirts. Um, and I'm going to be their friend and then I'm going to start conversations with them and they're going to follow me back. Um, so I'm not getting like, I've never had a huge following. Um, but the people that 5,000, 5,000 is still well, a lot for some. Well, like, I mean, I don't, it's nothing crazy, but the people that do follow me, um, like I said, I have a lot of lifers, um, that, that come and know what I'm about and they know that we share the same interests. So I do a lot of, you know, when I'm shopping basically on Instagram, that's how I find a lot of people, brands I love, um, products I'm looking for. I ask for recommendations a lot. Um, I think that that's a really good thing to say, you know, I'm looking for a beach bag who has a great beach bag recommendation because it creates that, that relationship where if someone can recommend something to me, they want to have me recommend something to them. It's, it's like that, the book club mentality, or I think what's the book, Anna, the why women buy Is that we were talking to me about why she buys. That's a, um, where she, they were saying like, Oprah is just some random I mean, not some random lady, but Oprah, most people don't relate to Oprah. Like most of us aren't, you didn't grow up like Oprah. We're not Oprah. We're not billionaires, but whatever Oprah said, go buy on her Christmas list. You went out and buy it because you trusted her. You love her. You, you want her in your house. You want her to take you to dinner. She tells you to buy something. You buy something because you've built that trust and relationship with her. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing where if I tell you to, if they tell me like, go buy this, it's so awesome. And then if I say, go do Pio. It's so awesome. We built that relationship where we trust each other. Totally. Yeah. It translates, um, in many ways. People, people want your opinion, your advice, um, in, 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 in both ways. Like you should be looking for other people's advice and, and, and feedback beyond just about beach body workouts and home workouts and Shakeology, right? Like it, it applies across the board. Um, and something for those of you that are working on growing your following, I want to remind you of something really important that Nicole and all of us are not all of us, but a lot of the veteran coaches that you see with thousands of followers, who didn't just wake up one day with thousands of followers. Nicole has been intentionally, intentionally, intentionally building her brand and her Instagram for three and a half years now. And that consistency over time, even though she probably didn't gain, you know, 
2,000 followers overnight. She's, she's been in it for the long haul and, and always shows up. And she always shows up on brand. So that's going to help you when you develop that yourself and you stay consistent. Um, your Instagram's going to grow. And really, the thing that I like to focus on beyond just the number of followers you have is are you getting new eyes on your content on a daily basis? That's the goal is to be getting new eyes. You're going to gain and you're going to lose followers and it's okay to lose followers. Don't let that number, um, make you feel like anything. Don't let it make you feel like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not making any progress. Like, are you getting new followers and new eyes? If you're not, then maybe you should do some reflection and figure out why you're not getting any new traction. Um, but that's my focus personally. Um, yeah. Okay, Nicole, I have one more question for you, and then um, I always do a post-call giveaway. So if you would like to pick a personal development book to give away to one of these lovely ladies who hung out with us tonight, um, I'll pick um, Okay, so my favorite personal development book, it's a super easy read, but it totally changed, like, everything, the way I look about think about life is for agreements. I think that's yes. oh my God. Such a good book that everyone should read it. I think you can buy it for eight bucks on Amazon, but somebody could win it tonight. Yeah, that's awesome. And I actually, I think I have an extra copy. So that's even more perfect. Great choice. Four agreements is a must read for everyone. And I actually have the four agreements saved as my background on my phone so that I'm constantly reminded of them because they're things that I live by. So Sweet. Okay, Nicole. So um, we're going to go national wake up call style here and practice for the day that you are on the national wake up call. Um, if you could, you know, just tell us since you've become a coach, like how has Beachbody and this business changed your life? Ah, oh gosh. So I, I mean, like I, I touched on it before, if it wasn't, if well, one, um, it pays off my student loans. I owe a, I owe a quarter million dollars um, in student loans. And every month I don't have to worry about that. Um, and that's so huge for us um, to not have to, to take that burden on. But more importantly, it's the friendships that I've made. And I, I can't say that enough. Um, I didn't have anybody and I was all alone and I was lost. And, you know, Stacy came into my life and, and the people that I have now, I wouldn't have made have them without Beachbody. And it's so silly sometimes we, we say, you know, this company changed my life. But really, I mean, I didn't have friends with this. So, um, yeah. Yeah. no, oh my gosh, it's so true. Cause like, you know, I think sometimes we get confused as Beachbody coaches who are representing or partnering with a brand that has products. I think sometimes we get confused that we're like, salespeople or we're in the business of sales. And I just want to remind you that we're in the business of building relationships. And, um, the more relationships that you build that are authentic, true, and strong, your business is going to reflect that as well. So awesome. Love it. Thank you so, so much for taking the time out of your evening for putting that awesome PowerPoint together which had me cracking up the entire time and sharing with us. I appreciate you so much. Of Thanks. course.